Charles Martel is one of the most asked about commanders in my live streams, and it's not too surprising why that would be the case. He's good in the early game, and he still has a role in the late game. So in this video, I'm going to walk through it so you have everything you need to know about this commander, why it is that he's strong and the cases where you can best use him. I'll give you the best talents to use with him and also the very best pairings. So whether you're a brand new player to the game or you're figuring out how to still get some mileage from your Charles Martel in KVK Season 4 and beyond, this video will have the answers you're looking for. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And although the majority of commanders you can get from gold keys aren't going to be all that relevant in the endgame, Charles Martel happens to be one of those commanders that is still getting a fair amount of use. If there's any one part of this video, by the way, that you're most interested in, do use the timestamps down below in the description to navigate to whatever portion of the video you're most interested in. And if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I have over 1,600 videos dedicated to helping you smash your enemies in Rise of Kingdoms, and I'm sure that there will be plenty of other videos you will enjoy, and I put out new content every single day. Smash the like button, subscribe, and let's get started. The big challenge with Charles Martel is that he's actually got a little bit of an identity crisis. That is because one of his skills is dedicated purely to defending cities. And you shouldn't really be in a situation where you need to defend your city. In fact, often you should just use a peace shield. And if you truly need to be defending your city... You need to know how to defend your city. I'll talk about that more maybe in the end of this video in order to survive that. And having this commander or some other commander, it's not going to make or break your city's defense. You should probably just use a peace shield. Now, the other side of Charles Martel's identity from being a city captain is the complete opposite of the spectrum, which is giving him march speed, being an open field commander once you have him expertise. So it's this identity crisis that makes him a little bit less viable than I would like in either situation, which is a little bit of a bummer. However, as far as early game commanders go, he's actually still very strong. Just maxing out the first two skills will give you a lot of punch. This first skill gives you 1,200 shielding factor. So while the shield is active, you don't take damage per se, it's absorbed by the shield, and also you boost your damage by 30%. It's for this reason that I really like to pair another commander with him who does very high skill damage. So you use your Charles Martel as the primary, and then your secondary commander you want to then fire off their active skill and take advantage of all the bonus damage. The second skill is just a bunch of raw stats, and it's enhanced by the expertise. So the base value of this skill is actually going to be 15% defense and health. And those are very premium statistics to pick up. So the first two skills on Charles Martel are pretty good. The third skill is only for city defense. And the fourth skill gives you a little bit of counterattack. So often what people will do with this commander is max the first two skills and then hope that the remainder of their points land on the fourth skill. And they try to use them in the open field. And by the way, at even just 5 3 one, 1 that's five points in the first skill, three points in the second, one in the last two, he would most likely be better than the majority of epics that you're looking at, depending on the situation where you want to use him. Because of the combination of Charles's skills with a shield, boosting the damage that you deal, having a lot of defense and health, and even just having counterattack, which only does anything when somebody directly targets your march, the Charles Martel weakness is that you can just ignore him. And that might sound really cool to you, like, oh, nobody hits me. I just get a lot of, you know, free kills when I'm in the open field. But if you're trying to actually maximize your effectiveness, the way you offset this weakness of only being really strong when you're being targeted is by pairing with a secondary commander that makes it a threat even if they don't target you. So this is very high skill damage. If you can do damage even when they don't target you, now you're in a really great place with a Charles Martel pairing. I'll talk more about those pairings later in the video, but I wanted to mention that up front when looking at his kit because he's got these weird three dynamics of being really tanky, but also being an open field commander, but also enhancing damage of another commander that you're paired with, right? The way you offset all that dynamic and just take advantage of it is with a high 
damage secondary commander. One more thing that we do need to talk about when we talk about the skills on Charles Martel is the fact that when you enter KVK Season 4 and beyond, there is a museum. And in the museum, you can obtain relics for some of the early game commanders, like your Charles Martel, and it gives them extra buffs. So when you get to Season of Conquest, KVK Season 4 and beyond, the extra 25% attack and 5% health is pretty decent. I do wish that it was almost entirely health or defense, and that actually would be better than having any attack on Charles Martel. And I know that sounds weird, but attack is just that uninteresting as a stat when you enter KVK Season 4 and beyond. That said, this is a pretty decent buff to his kit, and you don't have to have him expertise to get this buff. So you can have him, like, the first two skills maxed, and the rest can be whatever, whatever, 1-1, one, one, let's say. And you can unlock the relic, and boom, it, when you have the relic, it's an instant 25% infantry attack, 5% infantry health, which is a pretty good buff overall. Hopefully at this point, though, I've convinced you that he make, it really makes sense for him to be the primary commander. Boost the damage that you deal, and then boom, hit him with some big skill damage. If you were to do this, you have several talent options. The first option I'll present to you, by the way, is what is often used in Canyon, and there are some variations of this, which I will explain. This build is really good in Sunset Canyon because of one particular talent. We've gone all in on the defense tree right over here. It's Desperate Elegy. This is a weird one, and I actually made a dedicated video all about this talent and how insane it is. The card will be up in the top if you want to go and check that out. But when the troops led by this commander are reduced to 30% of units remaining, they gain an extra 25 rage from each normal attack. That's 25 rage per second, which is a lot of extra rage. So this is so good in Canyon because your march is going to get all the way down to probably zero health at some point, right? And therefore, you get a ton of rage toward the end of fight and really enjoy the full benefit of that. I wouldn't use this in the open field, because you shouldn't be running down your marches all the way to sad face every single time. Once you start to get red, you should be looking for a way to pull your march out of that situation. And the one talent that is really sort of debatable, depending on how much you see calves in your uh, meta for Canyon, will be to use Iron Spear, boosting your damage to cavalry instead of the extra rage gen. It's debatable. I prefer the damage taken reduction over here to the extra uh, damage to calves or rage gen. Again, it depends on where you put him in the mix for your canyon lineup and what you're frequently up against. However, we were talking about open field and let's get to that build. This is the latest and greatest Charles Martel build that I would recommend to you. And there's a couple things that are different from any of the other Charles Martel builds I've made to date. The first is that I didn't go for the full infantry tree. I abandoned the idea of going for elite soldiers, which is some good stats. And it's half a percent of attack, defense, and health per point you put into it. That's pretty good. One and a half percent of stats is good per point. However, I will say that points over here, or talents over here, give you one full percentage. So we're only half a percentage better than things you could get other places. And weirdly enough, you get two full percentage points per talent you apply on Strong of Body. This is just a better talent. And health is a preferred stat. That's a more complicated topic, but... Let's just run with that idea for a bit. So I abandoned the top part of that full infantry tree, which also includes some march speed reduction on the enemy, in order to free up some points. And I'll explain where I put them in the defense tree. I first want to call out, however, that because we're talking about open field, I did retain points over here for march speed. That's two points, four points, and then another three for seven points total, 18% march speed has got to sound good to you because, man, it is really good. It is, however, the defense portion of the tree that really merits a lot of discussion. And some of these points are just undebatably exceptional. One of them is reducing the skill damage that you take. This is undebatably exceptional. There's a ton of area of effect skill damage. You need to reduce the amount that you take. I also really like just reducing the damage that you're taking. The way that I see this talent balance is that it's a net positive of 1.5% damage. So essentially, you reduce the damage you take by 3%, uh, but also reduce the damage you deal by 1.5%. I view it as like a net positive of 1.5%. I know that's not exactly what's happening. What's really happening is you make your march more tanky, which again, this is why I recommend you pair with someone who does a lot of damage. So whether or not they hit you or target you, you're still going to dish out a lot of damage. And I did go for 6% more march speed over here. Absolutely crucial to get those infantry moving fast, and the preceding points are 
absolutely amazing. It's undebatable that these are points that you would want to go pick up. Uh, based on your star level, you get a bunch of defense. You want this commander to be the primary, so he's going to be six stars. Also, boosting the rage that you are gaining is a big deal. This is rage gained when you're attacked, which scales really nicely with people swarming you. And I also really like this talent, Medicinal Supplies, especially in the early game. But the reason that I like this is that if you are not targeted, then you're getting a total of 600 healing factor every skill cycle. What do I mean by that? Your active skill of the primary commander will fire off. That should be Charles Martel. He is going to gain 300 healing factor worth of healing. There'll be a second of downtime, and then your secondary commander will fire off their active skill, and you gain another 300 healing factor worth of healing. So this is nice because if they do not target you, then you have a lot of sustain in the field between your shields and your heals. This is a march that is going to stay full. I prefer medicinal supplies to testudo formation over here because the way that testudo formation triggers is when you normal attack an enemy. And sure, it's nice when you normal attack an enemy to have all the damage that you take reduced for a short window. I think it's 15% for like a, a one second window. I would rather have the healing in this instance and if you're in KVK Season 4 and beyond, and you're worried there's a lot of Gilgamesh running around who punishes you for healing, you could switch it up and you could instead do Testudo Formation if you so chose. So I suppose that these two are somewhat interchangeable, but personally my preference still is with the Medicinal Supplies. That healing effect, especially with how frequently you're going to get it on the active skill of the primary and secondary does really stack up. If for some reason you were taking a rally on your city, this is when we could justify going into the garrison tree and doing a talent build like this. This is a build designed to be anti-cavalry because we've picked up the iron spear talents. Don't underestimate just how good those are against cavalry. If you're using your Charles Martel, you definitely want to have those talents if you're getting rallied by calves. And the more likely situation is that your city is going to be getting swarmed in which case, you would want to drop some of the talents over here, especially, for example, a talent like Testudo Formation, which only scales up with your normal attacking an enemy, having a chance to sort of trigger, to instead go for stuff like you see over here, Know Thy Enemy, so good. And I will point out that for city defense in general, you'd rather have points like I put them over here, giving you buffs to sort of all troop types, rather than points in just infantry stats, because most people have a roughly equal blend of all troop types, which means that when you're defending your city, you're actually getting more value by buffing all the different troop types than by buffing just one troop. Even though the buff amount is twice as much, you have four different troop types in your city. So that half percent giving each troop type a little bit of boost is a pretty big deal compared to the one percent just for infantry. And I guess if your city was stacked infantry, you could just focus those talents instead. This next part, I suppose, is what you're more interested in. What are the best pairings for Charles Martel? And I'll start by talking about the end game, the thing you can look forward to, even if you're not there yet, is that if you did put some amount of sculptures into Charles Martel, and I'll talk about if I would recommend that or not in just a minute, but even if you just got them from gold keys and you had your Charles Martel in a good spot, you're in KVK season four and beyond, there are two really strong pairings that you can consider. The strongest pairing that you could use would be Scipio Prime. Skippy Prime, or just Skippy as I've been calling him, uh, does exactly what you needed with the Charles Martel pairing. He does huge amounts of skill damage. That's exactly what you wanted to do. So if they target the Charles with Skippy, then great. You are really tanky and do a lot of counterattack damage. If they don't target it, then great. You are doing a ton of debuffs and a ton of damage. That's exactly where you want to be. And the reason this combo really works is off the back of Skippy's overall commander strength. He is just an insane commander. And so he really elevates any commander you'd pair him with but Charles is especially viable. The other commander that still gets a lot of use as a pairing is the Charles primary with a Herald secondary. Now, the reason that the Herald secondary works really well is that if you don't actually target the Charles Herald, it's going to do a lot of damage to you. Herald has instant proc damage, which is amazing. He also has elevated counterattack damage and does area of effect skill damage when he's being targeted. This means that he's a really solid Charles pairing. But at this moment in time, 
Although it's a good pair in the open field, it is a bad investment as a commander. In other words, when you compare the commander strength of Skippy Prime to a commander like Harold Sigurdsson, it's not even the same universe. The Skippy is greatly superior. So I think that this is a combo you use if you have it, but not a combo you look to invest in at this moment in time. Now, if you are in the early game, however, and you wanted to look at some commander pairings, you do have a lot more options because look, the sort of competition is not nearly as steep. Everybody's using more basic stuff. Most people are, you know, unlocking their T4 at the start of the game, right? So you're fine. You can use some much more basic things. And let's start with some of those best examples. I think that with Charles Martel, it's very easy to pair with Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu does area of effect skill damage. So your Charles Martel gives you the shield. The shield boosts damage dealt. And then boom, Sun Tzu does damage. That's where you want to be. Sun Tzu also has tankiness. It's a little bit of a bummer that he's boosting skill damage, but Charles doesn't do any skill damage. So it's a little bit of a rip. But otherwise, it is a solid combo. I also think you could get away with doing a commander like Ulji Mundok for some debuffs. I just don't think it's amazing compared to the two because he's not doing as much skill damage. I will say, like the amount of counterattack damage you do and also you have a chance to do more damage uh, at, after they sort of are attacking you is pretty big. 100% more damage on your next turn is a massive buff. So Charles sort of makes you live a little bit longer and then boom, you hit him really hard. Hopefully, if you get strike back to trigger. Perhaps a better pair in the early game would actually be Bjorn Ironside. And there's a lot to like about Bjorn Ironside. He does have instant proc damage. Love to see it. He does have sort of lower skill damage, but a really great debuff. It's an AoE debuff, making it so targets take more skill damage. Unfortunately, you're not really taking advantage of making Bjorn the primary and then having the next thing that hits do a lot of skill damage. But I still think that Charles with Bjorn would be a fine way to go. He also gives a little bit of attack, a little bit of a defense boost. It's not the best, but we're talking about early game commanders, and these epics will perform well for you. The final combination that I don't love, but is often done in the early game, because you need a place to put Joan of Arc if you're going to use her, is to use the uh, Charles primary, and you hide Joan of Arc behind the Charles. And the reason that that works is very simple. People don't want to swing into a Charles. It's a low priority target. And Joan of Arc as a primary is often focused out and is relatively weak, even though the support tree is nice at reducing the skill damage that you take. So you don't really take advantage of the damage engine that's available to you on Charles Martel, but it's a great place to hide your Joan. I think the preferred place to hide a Joan of Arc would actually be behind Richard I, but Richard I is another one of those commanders that is highly relevant in the early game but falls off so fast and so for what you invest in him it's a little bit of a bummer for the relevance you'll get out of him in the late game one other combo i will mention that is often used in the early game would be to put a commander like alexander the great once you get to kvk season two or so and put him with a charles martel this works better than you would think and you can get away with it but it also was a very ignorable combo in a lot of ways. The Charles and Alex combo really isn't doing enough damage, in my opinion, to protect other high damage marches that are out on the field. And this is a murder ball philosophy I've talked about in a number of videos, explaining that if you have some marches that are really tanky and some marches that do a lot of damage but cannot survive, they're glass cannons, you have an imbalance in your open field. And that means that you're... Tanky marches can't protect your high damage marches, and it's a bad way to run an open field set of marches because you ultimately are leaving your stronger high, high damage marches somewhat vulnerable to getting swarmed out. So my preference is to have all must answer threats. This is a very common concept in gaming. This is not a new idea by any stretch of the imagination, so I won't take credit for inventing all must answer threats as an idea. What I will say, though, is that I have applied that very aggressively in Rise of Kingdoms and hopefully somewhat popularized that idea here, where, again, I think that the Charles and Alex combo is fine, but it's not going to do a lot to protect your Esong, who's a lot more vulnerable and likely to get targeted. There are, of course, other things that you could consider. Uh, some things that people do would be to pair Ethelflaed with Charles Martel and use all infantry, and that's actually pretty reasonable. It will perform 
better than you might expect. There are commanders in the early game like Boudica that you might consider pairing because she generates a little bit of rage. And actually, because Charles doesn't have the skill tree, the rage and healing is pretty nice. She's a glass cannon. He is pretty tanky and wanted someone that does damage. So there are some pairings here that are pretty solid that you'll see people use that I think actually are pretty good. And you'll see often that I recommend Boudica as a commander you first uh, get uh, by going with Britain in the early game. I think that's a really good choice without rehashing why I think that's a good starting sieve here. I'll have a card up in the top for that video. What I'll simply say is that the pairing is good. And there's a lot of commanders you can pair with Charles Martel, which is why he has remained viable even in the end game. So should you put universal legendary commander sculptures into Charles Martel? I generally would say no, probably not. And it will feel really tempting to want to put some universals into Charles Martel, but I will point out to you, and I appreciate that my account is over three years old and absolutely stacked at this point, but once you actually expertise a commander in this game, there's no big upside other than enjoying the commander. Um, so by that I mean every single Charles Martel sculpture you get from Gold Keys after you have maxed them out as a commander is going to basically be wasted. There's very little that you can get for it. So here are my 1,431 Charles Martel sculptures that I got after already having expertise him. GG. So yes, there is value in Charles Martel as a commander and having him even at 5511. And if you were to put in sculptures, which I cannot really recommend that you do in the early game because there are so many other commanders that you're really going to want to invest in early, like Esong or Alexander the Great, if you did, it wouldn't be a catastrophe of a choice to have taken Charles Martel to 5511 and not to put a single universal more into him. But I still can wholeheartedly not recommend that path. But if you are looking for guidance on what commanders to invest in in the early game, I'll have two videos for you that you can go and check out. The cards will be over here and here in just a second. One is going to tell you exactly what I think your investment order should be based on the commanders that are sort of available in the game at this time. And the other will give you an overall tier list as of the summer of 2022, showcasing what the best commanders were and what the end game looks like. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, you have fun, smash your enemies. Cards will be here and here in just a second.